Rules of contour lines are best displayed in examples that we will work through in this video. So the first rule for contour lines is they are lines of equal elevation. So sea level is typically the reference point set to zero, and elevation is typically given in feet or meters, depending on what unit you're working in. And so elevation, we're looking at changes to the height of the land surface above sea level. Uh, contour lines are representations of the elevation on a map. They separate higher from lower elevations, which we will see as we draw the lines in this map area. And contour lines reoccur at a fixed interval, which is known as the contour interval. On a map, this will always be given. It's, it's say, 10 meters or 20 feet, depending on what unit you're using, or 20 meters uh, it will always be given, or you will be able to calculate it, as we will see uh, later in this video. So the first thing is, let's take this map, and let's say our elevations are in meters, and we're going to use a contour interval of 10 meters. So let me make note of that, so we have it written here. So let's say our interval is 10 meters. We want to draw contour lines following rules, excuse me, 1 and 2, using a 10 meter interval. So again, sea level is set to 0. We don't draw a contour line for it because the coast is essentially the contour line. So the first contour line we have to draw is the contour line for 10. So we can see in the map area we have a few points that have an elevation of 10. Now instinctually you're going to draw a line across from point to point but let's check the surrounding elevations to make sure that works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use highlighters of various colors to visualize the elevations. So pink is going to be any elevation less than 10. Yellow are going to be elevations between 10 and 20. Orange are going to be elevations between 20 and 30 because that's what we have in this map area. So when we put a little bit of color to it we can see that when we draw the contour line for the 10 meter elevation we want to separate the pink and yellow points because one of them is less than 10, one of them is greater than 10, and we want to separate elevations that are higher than our line from elevations that are lower than our line. So we'll go ahead and draw our contour line for an elevation of 10. And what we see, again, is everything on one side is less than 10. Everything else on the other side is greater than 10. Make sure the contour lines always go to the edge of the map area when you're drawing contour lines. You never want to have them stop in the middle of the map. They should always go to the edge of the map or form what's called a closed loop that we will see later in this video. Following our contour interval of 10 meters, because this line is at 10 meters, our next one has to be at 20 meters. So this time, again, because of highlighting the elevations, we want to separate everything that's highlighted in yellow from everything that's highlighted in orange. So we'll go ahead and we will draw the contour line for 20. And now we see everything between the contour lines for 10 and 20. We highlight it as yellow. Their elevations are numbers that are between 10 and 20. Our next line is 30. So we'll go ahead and draw that line in. And we see again everything between the lines for 20 and 30 has an elevation between the numbers 20 and 30 and we had highlighted those in orange at the start. So these are the first three rules to follow when drawing contour lines. The next three rules add some complications. When we have a stream, streams carve valleys and valleys change the elevation of the land surface in an area. 
So when contour lines cross a stream, they make a V shape. And I'll draw those in just a second so you can see what it looks like. And the V points to higher elevations, which again we'll just see in a second. Every fifth contour line is bold, so it's thicker on the map area than the others, and it has the elevation written on the line. So in the previous figure, we just drew lines. We didn't write the numbers for each line on the line. The contour interval, inter, the bolded index contour lines will have the number written on the line itself. And then the spacing of contour lines shows slope. These contour lines, again, are showing the change, changes in elevation on a map area where the lines are closer together. You're having more vertical change, so you will have a steeper slope, whereas where the lines are further apart, you will have a less steep slope. So following rules 1, 2, and 3 from the last figure, Along with the rules for 4, 5, and 6 for this figure, I will start putting some of the lines on the map. And let's again use a 10 meter interval for this figure, because you'll see all the points have a nice 10 meter spacing. So the first thing we want to do is draw the line for the 10 meters in the south. So we see across the stream is another 10 meter point here. We don't want to draw a line straight across because Contour lines have to make a V shape. Now, this could be, depending on the elevation, an upside down V instead of how a V looks like in the alphabet. So here we have the upside down V because higher elevation, you see higher numbers, are in the north. And remember the V, the apex of the V, has to point towards uphill. So higher numbers for us are north. That means instead of our V looking like it does in the alphabet, the apex has to point to those higher numbers pointing to the north. I'm going to go ahead and draw the lines for the rest of them, 20, 30, and so forth. Each time, the contour line has to V as we go across the stream. So I'm going to go up through the line for 40 and then I'm going to put this back up for you so here we have 10 20 30 40 and we can see some places the contour lines are really close together we have a steeper slope where they're more spread out we have a more shallow slope and remember every fifth contour line has to be bolded so the below 10 we would have sea level is 0, but again that's not a line. So we drew 1 for 10, 20, 30, 40 was our fourth, so 50 is our fifth line. That means that it has to be bolder, it has to be thicker than these lines, and we also have to write the number for the elevation on the line. So let me go ahead and do that. Take a second, because my marker is not cooperating too greatly. So, here you can see the index contour, the line is thicker, it is more bold than the others, and then also we've written the number on it. When you're looking at a map that has a bunch of contour lines, the index contours are really going to help it stand out so that you can see um, more easily the changes in elevation, the actual numbers, because when you have contour lines on a map, you don't have points along them connecting them, typically it's just the line and the index contour line helps you see the elevation. I'm going to draw the last one for 60. Again, it's thinner because it's not an index contour line. It V's when it crosses the stream. So we should have something that looks like this, helping us see changes in elevation along the land surface. The last rule for drawing contour lines, or set of rules, 
is looking at when we have closed loops. So instead of having lines go straight across the map area, now our points are arranged so that they're actually going to close and form irregular circles, or what we call loops. If we have two cases. We have hilltops that are bumps up in elevation, and we have depressions that are bumps down like bowls. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this one that has the higher elevations in it. So the first that I see are 60. Let's start with a 10 meter interval. So instinct might tell you to just make a straight line between the 60s, but again you want to make a loop. So we want to have a circle. Let's use a 10 meter interval. So we'll draw the line to connect the 50s. I'm going to make it bolder because based on a 10 meter interval, uh, every fifth index, every fifth contour line should be bold. So anything divisible by 50 should be bold in this case. If your index contour lines could be different if your interval is different. So I've made that one bolder. We'll then make for 40 by connecting all of the dots that have an elevation of 40. And again, you want to try to have smooth lines. And it can be up to you. I've made this one where it kind of goes back in and then out. It could go more smooth all the way out. If there's nothing to say, like an elevation point, it has to go here or it has to go right here. This is kind of up to you. So I did this as an example for you. Again, it could have been a line that went smooth from there to there. Either way is up to you. And then the last one that we have here are points for 30. So when it's a hilltop, this is what it looks like. Closed loops, elevation is increasing as you move towards the center, meaning this is the hilltop in the center. When we have a depression, which we see over here, it's going to look a little bit different. So I'm going to draw the lines for 30, 40, and 50. 30 again, the points are in the center, so our loop is the smallest. We then go out to 40. which is there, and then 50 again, if we're using a 10 meter interval, we want to make bold, because anything that's divisible by 50 on a 10 meter interval would be an index line. Go ahead and draw this in, and I'll hold it up for you in just a second. So, this is how the contour lines line up for our depression. Now, right now, the depression is not shown correctly. Because if you just have the lines, the closed loops, this looks like a hilltop. What we need to do to set it apart to make sure it appears as a depression is we need to make tick marks on the contour line. The way that works is, I'm going to do one here for you. is on the inside of the line towards the center of the depression we make these little tick marks they kinda look like little teeth almost and we do that for every line that is a part of the depression so the 30, the 40, and the 50 in this case we put little tick marks on go ahead and do that So that now we have a clear distinction between a depression with tick marks and a hilltop. Because both are closed loops, the visual thing that sets them apart to tell us hilltop versus depression are these tick marks. These are the rules that we are going to follow when we draw contour lines throughout the lab.